All right, so on this episode, we're going to show you how to find your nodal point or no parallax point. So a couple of things you're going to need to do this. First thing is, uh, I think in episode two or three, we talked about this. First thing is the uh, panoramic head. And this just helps you get the right, um, you know, the 360 panos and then also a nodal rail or nodal slide. Now you can get different lengths and sizes for different lenses. And for this one, we're shooting on a 16 to 35 millimeter uh, Canon F4 lens and a Canon 5D Mark IV. Now the other things you would want is a L bracket. You don't need it, but if you want to put it into that portrait orientation, that's going to help a lot. Uh, pretty much anything that you can get it so it will allow you to have a, um, a level base is important. So that's why we've got the leveling base here on the Gitzo tripod. Now, the other thing that we're gonna to use today to help find our nodal point and nodal rail is a just a light stand. And we're gonna line this up with all the buildings in the background. So, what we'll do, we'll get this started. We'll turn the camera on. Now, first things first, we're at 16 mil here. So I'll just record in camera as well. The main goal here is to make sure that anything in the background doesn't move with uh, what we have in the foreground. And so finding the uh, no parallax point or um, nodal point is, you know, the goal is to pretty much make sure that your axis spins all on the center column. So when you've got your camera positioned straight directly on top, you'll actually find that the lens sticks over the top so you're not actually on the center column. That's why we use the nodal rail, slide it back, and then this gives you the perception of having it um, spinning on top of that axis. All right, so as you can see here, I've got this lined up pretty good already. You can see that the uh, the light stand's not really moving at all from position, but how did I get there? So what you have to actually have to do, let's just say that we're pretty much on top of the axes right there. And as I move it left to right, you can really see that the light stand is moving quite a lot. You can see that it's not lining up with the buildings. It's constantly moving when I'm panning left to right. So that's an issue when you start to stitch panoramas together. And off, the reason why it's an issue is because it's actually gonna make it a lot more difficult for the software to find the, um, the places for it to stitch together. So you wanna to try to minimize that and increase the chances of an easy stitch instead of fiddling around in Photoshop. So pretty much what you need to do now when you're on the nodal rail, You've got this opportunity to slide it back and forth. So all we're going to do is be sliding it back and forth like this to try to find the correct um, location on the nodal rail to make sure that it doesn't move. So as you can see here I'm moving it left and right and that's still not good so what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide it back a little bit further. We're going to see what we can see here and again Still moving in the background there so the foreground and background are moving so slide it back even further hopefully we're starting to get a bit close you can see it's not moving as much so we're going to slide it back just a little bit more and one more time yeah you can see there it's actually not sliding much at all so the next step though I'd lock this in place the next step is, and I'm gonna stop recording to do this, what I'm gonna do is zoom in using live view to five and 10 times to really see if we've got the right position. All right. So, all you do is press the zoom button whilst you're in live view. You've got one times, five times. So at five times, you can sort of have a look. And you can see it's not moving this position. We're gonna slide in one more time zoom on in and it's not moving at all so I'm just going to record that one more time 
So that's that 16 mil. What you do from there is take note on the nodal rail and your center column to work out where it needs to be positioned. And you pretty much do that at every single focal length and lens that you think you're gonna shoot with. Um, so for me, I'm often shooting at 16 mil or 35 mil. So I'd actually do that on this lens twice. And then on my 24 to 70, I like shooting at that 24 mil. And I've also got a 50 millimeter uh, Sigma lens that I also like shooting on. The good thing with primes is you don't have that change in uh, zoom perspective which is gonna make finding your nodal point a lot easier. From here, what I would actually do is in a uh, Word document or all your notes on your phone, it's just write down the exact spot on the nodal rail for 16 mil, 35 mil, and for anything like that. That's pretty much it. Um, just repeat that process on all the different lenses that you have for different focal lengths, and hopefully you can sort of minimize uh, the chances of capturing the incorrect um, you know overlay of lapping shots so this has been another episode of imagine capture inspire i hope you like this little quick tip um, we've just actually finished up photographing sunrise here in brisbane city in queensland australia and unfortunately we didn't quite get the clouds but all the buildings always look pretty good anyway so uh, hope you enjoyed this episode i'm going to show you a, a few little shots from today um, and you can sort of see what, it's, what it looks like here in Brisbane, Australia. Chat to you soon.